few weeks ago, I ranked my best and worst of the Pixar films. Today, it's DreamWorks' turn on this episode of Rise of the Animations. That's a working title. Here, I'm Guru Hub. It's a shame that one of the best looking Shreks is also the most miserable to watch. All the favorites return in Shrek the Third. Donkey, Puss in Boots, Fiona, and of course the Big Green Org himself. This movie's not funny, it's not creative, it's just a total mess. And the internet lied to me when they said Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Don't Google that. It'll haunt your dreams. I can see the pitch for Turbo now. Listen, it's a movie about a snail that does the opposite of what snails do. Instead of going slow, it goes fast. This mollusk will be an outcast, having to prove his value to the rest of his kind. It's basically a bug's life meshed with cars, except we're not as good, because you know, we're not Pixar. If you're wondering how many terrible puns one movie can contain, watch B-Movie. Or better yet, don't. Seinfeld is my favorite TV comedy, so I thought there was a chance this could be good. Honey, it stung. You thought those puns were bad? That's barely scratching the surface. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm sorry. Home currently sits at 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, making me think that the 48% didn't actually watch the film, or they just love Jim Parsons, as he plays the lead alien. It also doesn't help that another movie already exists where an alien is trying to get home. It's called Mac and Me. It's f terrible. I'm joking, I'm referring to E.T., of course. Just watch that instead. I am 99.9% .9 confident this movie only exists because a writer out there realized some actors have big lips. And I think this is an accurate assumption because no one would cast Renee Zellweger in an animated movie for just her voice. This is another pun-heavy picture. Uh, the title, in fact, is one. And I have nothing against puns. Shark Tale just didn't float my boat, though, if you catch what I'm casting out. Once again, I'm sorry. DreamWorks has plenty of fine films under its belt, too, such as my number five spot, Rise of the Guardians. Financially, this thing was a huge disaster, responsible for 350 layoffs at DreamWorks due to its poor box office pull. I found it to be a fun, refreshing animation wedged in between a slew of superhero flicks. It also has one of the coolest versions of Santa I've ever seen. He's referred to as North in the film. Fans desperately want a sequel, but alas, it's probably never gonna happen. Oh well, we'll always have those weird Elsa and Jack Frost shippers out there. I hate that I know that word. Shippers, stupid. There are two types of people in this world. Those that like Jack Black, and those that hate Joy. His infectious personality shines through in Kung Fu Panda as Poe, the lovable oaf destined to be the next dragon warrior. Truth be told, Poe can be a bit frustrating to listen to, but the rest of the cast and the amazing set pieces more than make up for it. DreamWorks' first big cash cow continues to be one of its best. 2001 Shrek was the perfect marriage of pop culture humor and fairy tale settings. Watching the gingerbread man being tortured by Lord Farquaad while reciting the Muffin Man nursery rhyme never gets old. Plus, any movie that features Smash Mouth's All Star is an instant win for me. That song will be played at my funeral. Hey now, you're an all -star. Get your game on, go play. I ignored the initial trailers for How to Train Your Dragon because I'm a damn fool. It will be the last time I ever disregard this franchise, and I'm very excited for the planned third film, The Hidden World. There are plenty of mature themes to be found in dragons, such as overcoming disabilities, carving your own path, and putting your faith in an unlikely stranger. Much like the faith I put into the local Quiznos worker, who said he would hook me up with a free sub if I sign flipped for him for five minutes while he went out for a smoke. He never came back. I never got that sub. But damn if I didn't flip that sign well. It's not often when a sequel manages to live up to the original. Even more uncommon, when it surpasses it in every way possible. How to Train Your Dragon does just that, with higher stakes, emotional surprises, detailed animation, an epic score, and an even bigger bond being formed by our two leads, Hiccup and his best friend Toothless. Oh, what? Do you want an apology? Is that why you're pouting, big baby poo? We'll try this on! Oh, you feeling it yet? I asked people for their favorite DreamWorks picture on the internet. They had thoughts. DreamWorks? 
Well, Shark has some moments. A uh, Kung Fu Panda. Mm. Mm. Thanks for taking time out of your alleged nap to answer that. Let's wrap up. While DreamWorks may not yet have the prestigious catalog that Disney and Pixar do, they have started to really carve out some nice features of their own. While the Croods and Madagascars of the world didn't make my top spots, they are enjoyable family films all the same. Thanks for watching this episode of How to Rank Your DreamWorks. That's a working title. And now we end how every song should begin. Somebody!